Hello, hello, it's Patrick here from thegaragebandguide.com. In this video, we're going to go back to basics and look at how to set up a new project and what options and templates GarageBand gives you to do this. So when you open up GarageBand, it will open the last project that you were working on by default. To start a new project, click File in the toolbar at the top and select New. If this is your first time opening GarageBand, you'll see the project template screen by default to begin with. Okay, so you have a few options available on the left here. New project is where we'll focus on for the majority of this video. Below it, you have Learn to Play, which lists any of the existing lessons provided with GarageBand or any that you've purchased from Apple's Lesson Store, which is right underneath it there. Beneath that, you've got Recents, which shows you a list of any projects you've worked on recently, surprisingly enough. Back at the New Project tab, you'll see eight different project templates available to you. Now, what these do is open a new GarageBand project with a variety of track types, instruments, and effects in place that allow you to quickly and easily get to work on a particular type of project. First up here is the Keyboard Collection, a diverse selection of keyboards and synthesizers. So if I open it up, you'll see there are over a dozen tracks preloaded with different piano, keyboard and synth presets from GarageBand's library pane for you to try out. So I'll load up GarageBand's built-in musical typing and here's how some of these pre-loaded tracks sound. Next up is Amp Collection, a collection of legendary guitar and bass amps. Now this template gives you a selection of presets from GarageBand's amp modelers, both the bass and the guitar amp modelers. Bear in mind you will need to connect a guitar or bass to your Mac to get the benefit from these tracks. So here's how some of them sound. Brand new in GarageBand version 10.0.3, the voice template lets you record your voice with modern, classic and experimental vocal tracks. The built-in microphone on your Mac will do a pretty good job of capturing your voice so you can see how these tracks sound, though for better results an external microphone will make things sound a lot cleaner and a lot more professional. So here's how some of these pre-loaded vocal tracks sound. <laughs> the 
the ringtone template opens a GarageBand project set up to help you quickly create your own ringtone. So you can see there the timeline is sized to 20 bars only, which is probably perfect length for a ringtone really. This template also opens up GarageBand's loop browser by default, which allows you to drag and drop pre-recorded loops into the timeline and really build up your ringtone that way. The hip hop, electronic and songwriter templates set up a project with track types and instruments commonly used for those specific genres. In the hip hop template, you'll find a gritty mix of drums and analog synths. In the electronic template, you'll find a solid blend of drum kits and pulsating synths. And in the songwriter template, you'll find an ideal writing studio with drums, guitar amps and vocal tracks. Now that just leaves the empty project template, which you guessed it, opens up a completely empty project, which lets you add tracks and instruments as you wish. Now this is usually how I start off a new project nowadays. I just prefer the freedom of not having any pre-existing tracks or anything in there and I can just chuck in whatever I want for my project. Finally, opening the details drop down menu allows you to adjust the tempo of your new project, choose the key signature and time signature, as well as allowing you to change the input and output settings too. You can change up a lot of these details on the fly from within your project at any time, so don't worry too much about them just now. The only thing you can't change once you're in your new GarageBand project is the time signature. So just make sure that if you have a particular time signature in mind, that you're gonna change that before you open up or start recording in your new project. Well, there you have it. That's how to hit the ground running with your new GarageBand project using the built-in templates available to you. If you're just getting started with GarageBand or just want a refresher on the basics, you can grab my free guide, the GarageBand Quick Start Guide. Come and get it at thegaragebandguide.com slash guide. You can click this big fat annotation that's in front of you right now or check out the link that's down there in the description box beneath this video. Hit that like button if you found this video helpful, guys. It really, really does help. Subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you come and check out the garagebandguide.com for more great GarageBand tutorials. Bye for now.